Hey guys, welcome to another IGCSE Chemistry Revision video. Today we're going to be covering the topic of electrolysis and I have just finished writing down all the notes on my website www.freeexamacademy.com so please go and pay a visit and check it out if you want. So without further ado, let's begin. I just want to go through the foundation and the basics of electrolysis with you today. So there's a couple of definitions. The main definition here that we'll be looking at is the electrolysis definition, which is basically the process of passing an electric current through a substance bringing about a chemical reaction. In electrolysis, you have certain things that you use. For example, an electrolyte is the liquid substance that conducts electrical current when in molten or dissolved in water. Uh, with chemical reactions happening at the electrodes. The electrodes are pieces of metal or carbon through which the current enters and leaves the electrolyte. And you've got two types, the cathode, which is a negative electrode attracting cations, and here, therefore it's named cathode, and an anode, which is the positive electrode, which attracts anions. So this is a very simple setup whereby you've got the battery pack or the, the power source connected to the two electrodes. One will be a negative one, which is the cathode. The other one will be a positive one, which is the anode. The cathode will attract cations from the electrolyte solution, whereby, whereas the anode will attract anions from the electrolyte solution. So reactions actually happen at these electrodes and we need to know you know what exactly is happening so at the cathode it'll usually be metal or hydrogen cations that get attracted and the cations will basically gain electrons at the cathode to produce metals or hydrogen gas respectively for example if you had copper uh, cations in the solution the copper ions will jump over to the cathode gain two electrons and become a copper metal uh, hydrogen on the other hand will again gain electrons, discharge itself, form the hydrogen gas, its molecular form. Aluminium, there's, sorry there's meant to be a plus in the middle here, but you get the point, it gains electrons again to form the aluminium uh, metal at the cathode. The reaction happening at the anode is variable, it depends on whether the anode is inert i.e. made of carbon or platinum compared to whether it's not inert or reactive whereby it's made of things like zinc or copper. Now if it is inert, okay, so it doesn't react, then what that will mean is that the anions will jump over to the anode and as you'd expect the anions will actually lose electrons to the anode and discharge itself. So for example chloride ions will jump over, lose two electrons, form the chlorine uh, gas molecules, whereas hydroxide ions will again uh, so gain some electrons, so lose electrons in this case, um, and discharge itself forming oxygen and water at the anode. Now if the anode was reactive, made of zinc, copper, whatever, the metals in the, at, uh, the anode itself will take part in the reaction instead. So for example, if you had an anode made of copper, at the anode, you won't get anions coming over to discharge itself. What will happen is the copper atoms within the anode will actually lose electrons to form copper ions that get uh, that move into the electrolyte. So when we think of an electrolyte, we need to think about what sort of ions are present inside it. And there are two main forms of electrolytes that Cambridge will give you. It's either molten or it's aqueous. Molten is basically the melted form of the substance whereas the aqueous form is whereby the substance is dissolved in water meaning it contains water as part of the electrolyte. So if it's molten it's fairly simple. Molten sodium chloride for example you know that because it's just melted the ions can only come from the substance only so therefore you have the sodium and the chloride ions. Pretty simple. Aqueous a little bit more difficult because the water itself produces ions. So if you have any sort of aqueous solutions, you can guarantee that inside the electrolyte, you'll actually find hydrogen and hydroxide ions in addition to the ions coming from the substance, for example, sodium chloride. So in this case, aqueous sodium chloride, you'll have the sodium and the chloride ions along with hydrogen and hydroxide ions, these ones coming from the water. So, Let's take a look at this example in a bit more detail. So the aqueous sodium chloride containing 
these specific ions here. You can see that there's two cations, sodium and hydro hydrogen ions, and you've got the chloride and the hydroxide anions. So at the cathode, obviously the cations are going to be attracted to the cathode because they've got opposite charge. So we need to think about the fact that only one of these can actually be discharged at the cathode. You can't, it's one or the other, you can't discharge both. Okay, so this is where the electrochemical series comes into play because some ions are a lot have a lot more tendency to discharge than others. So the lower down you are on the list, the more likely that that will discharge as opposed to something else above it. So when we take a look at the cathode, we take a look at the ions hydrogen and sodium, and we can see that hydrogen ions are lower down on the list, meaning they have a greater tendency to discharge. So therefore, at the cathode, you'll actually get the hydrogen ions getting discharged rather than the sodium ions. Same thing with the anode, because the hydroxide ions are lower down on the list compared to the chloride or the chloride ions, you actually get the hydroxide ions uh, forming oxygen um, at the anode. What that means is you get sodium ions and chloride ions being remained in, this, in the electrolyte solution. So therefore, um, because the hydroxide ions and the hydrogen ions are getting used up, sodium chloride solution will become progressively concentrated throughout the process of electrolysis. Really important note here, despite the fact that hydroxide ions are lower down on the list in the electrochemical series, if the, co if the solution itself was concentrated, for example, Cambridge might say concentrated sodium chloride solution, then it will in fact be chloride ions that get discharged instead of the hydroxide ions, simply because you have a lot more chloride ions in the solution. So rather than the equation above, like so, you'll actually get chloride ions getting discharged to form chlorine um, molecules at the anode if it was a concentrated sodium chloride solution. And so what that will mean will be that there will be sodium ions and hydroxide ions being remained in the electrolyte, and so that is basically sodium hydroxide. If they don't say anything, then just assume it's dilute, okay? But um, if they do specify concentrated solutions, then you'll have to go with the fact that chlorine will actually be formed instead of the oxygen. So let's take a look at some examples here, right? So whenever you're looking at these examples, you have to think about three main things. One, what are the ions present in the electrolyte? Two, uh, what are the reactions at the cathode or anode? Three, what is happening to the electrolyte? So if they say, for example, molten sodium chloride with inert electrodes, then you know that it's just sodium and chloride ions in the electrolyte, and so they will discharge accordingly, sodium being formed at the cathode and chlorine uh, molecules or gas being formed at the anode. And that's really simple, because it's just these two ions, then sodium chloride is being decomposed. Concentrated aqueous sodium chloride, we took a look at that before. The ions present are these four here. Uh, you get hydrogen being formed at the cathode, and at the anode you get chlorine being formed instead of oxygen because it's a concentrated solution. What that means is you have sodium and hydroxide ions remaining in the electrolyte, which makes sodium hydroxide. Concentrated hydrochloric acid, uh, the ions present will be these three here. Uh, reactions at the cathode, you'll form hydrogen, and at the anode, you'll, find, you'll, you'll form chlorine again because this is a concentrated solution. In a dilute sulfuric acid, um, you get the sulfate ions, the hydroxide ions, and the hydrogen ions. Um, again, hydrogen will be formed at the cathode because that's the only cation here. At the anode, um, you'll find that you get oxygen because the uh, first of all, this is a dilute solution, and second of all, hydrogen or well, the hydroxide ions are lower down on the electrochemical series than the sulfate ions anyway. So these ones will be discharged rather than the sulfate ions. What that means is that the acid will become more concentrated as water is being, well the hydroxide ions are being used up. So aqueous copper sulfate uh, with inert electrodes, in this specific example you have these four 
ions being present. Um, at the cathode, you actually get copper being discharged rather than hydrogen ions. Um, so you'll find copper being made. Again, that's because the copper ions uh, have a greater tendency to discharge itself. And you can find that on the electrochemical chemical series as before. At the anode, uh, you'll find uh, the hydroxide ions forming oxygen there. So the hydrogen ions and the sulfate ions will remain in the solution, which is basically sulfuric acid. Now what if these weren't inert electrodes? What if they were actually copper electrodes? And we talked about this in a brief, uh, uh, briefly before, but then, so in this situation, the copper electrodes will actually react at the anode instead. So the ions present are exactly the same. Okay, the only difference is that the anode is not inert. This means that rather than, as we looked at before, rather than the hydroxide ions being discharged here, what will happen is the anode itself will react. So the cathode reaction is exactly the same, but at the anode, the copper atoms will actually lose electrons to form copper ions, and the copper ions will go into the electrolyte solution. So that means that the copper will, de will be deposited at the cathode and it will become thicker, compared to the anode where copper is being used and removed um, and therefore the anode will get progressively thinner. The electrolyte remains the same because the cathode is removing copper ions from the solution but the anode is you know, providing the electrolyte more copper ions so it'll stay exactly the same overall. Uh, so this specific process is used to electroplate um, other metals with copper. So thanks for watching guys, I hope this has helped. For more notes, go to my website www.freeexamacademy.com It's got some extra notes on you know, commercial and industrial uses of electrolysis, other you know, bits and pieces that Cambridge wants you to know. Otherwise, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!